KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227 or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Church and Community Forum. I'm Reverend Ronald Wright sitting with Pastor Marion Barnett. And we have a great show today. Thank you, our producer. Uh, we're going to talk about several things today. One of the things is about the DISD uh, being turned into a charter school. And so we've got some issues with that this morning. Hopefully we've invited Juanita Wallace with the NAACP in, and hopefully she will show up. If not, we're going we're gonna to have an open mic and discuss that for the first hour of the show, maybe the first two hours of the show. Uh, we've got some great issues with that. Uh, yeah, we got some great issues with that and some concerns with that. As the uh, mayor is trying to turn our public school into a charter school. And what it is is a charter school attack on democracy. So uh, if you want to give us a call this morning, you can give us a call at 972-647-1893. That's 972-648-1893. Six four seven one eight nine three. Uh taxation without representation. Uh that's what this is about at the end of the day. Uh dictatorship on behalf of the mayor. So give us a call this morning. Um uh, I've got some issues with that concern this morning. I wanna know how in the world is a mayor gonna try to take care of the school when our city is not in the best of shape. We still look in the southern sector and there's no economic development, there's no jobs, but yet he feels like he can take over uh uh, the school system, and everybody knows it takes a village to raise a child, and and if the village is not doing any good, how are we going to ever raise a child? So we need to start with uh, uh, holding these elected officials accountable of the things that they need to do in this city. Uh, this this charter school thing is about voters' rights violations. At the end of the day, the, our, our voting rights are still being challenged at every entity it can be. And now here's the mayor. And all you mayor fans, that's okay. Uh, trying to trying to do things in this city. We've had several racial uh, meetings with some of our uh, city council uh, councilmen to holding. But at the end of the day, it's kind of like a dog and pony show. Nothing is ever being talked about. It's just another city council meeting on a Saturday. And at the end of the day, he's going from those type of issues to worry about what's going on in our school. Uh, when we talked to, uh, we went to a meeting the other night. I didn't get a chance to go. Well, I went earlier than everybody else did. And uh, several other organizations, the union, the teachers unions and the NAACP and several other organizations were there discussing the issues on what needs to be done. Historically, <coughs> Reverend Barnett and myself know with Justice Sickers is that we just can't talk about it. We got to be about it. And so that little meeting was about a full conversation, but no actions were were mentioned as to being taken. So this week we will be holding a press conference letting the citizens know <clears throat> the truth about what's going on with this charter school uh, 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 issue that they're trying to put over and take the independence out of our public schools. And so, uh, again, it, this, this is actually a... a about home rules over the district and those home rules over the district we need to understand that they decide how much tax they're going to get they de they determine the tax uh with these charter schools there is no free religion you can't come in there even though this is we reap what we sowed but this is one of those situations when we initially took prayer out of the school which there are some churches now that are starting a petition to try to get prayer back into the schools uh, this is the result of all those things that we get. Our sons and daughters in a charter school very well could be abused because the charter school can do just what they want to, and they have a right to decide who who they want to be principal and who they want not to run. So they're taking the community out of the school, and historically that's what brought us all up was the community. And, and, and that's raising, help raising these children. So like I said, give us a call, 972-647-1893. 
four seven one eight nine three. Uh we want they wanna there's a situation where we're trying to take the trust out of thieves. It just, there's no more trustees and so what they're saying is they don't want that the board of DISD needs to pick a commission of 15 people, which they've already got picked out. And historically, and I'm going to say this, a lot of people ought to get mad at me, there, there, there has been a history of uh, putting people that look like us. Now, that, that group that's trying to change the school district, 5% of the people that go to DISD schools are white children, 5%. The other 95 is children of color, Hispanic, African American. And on this commission board, I'm almost sure, I know the Republicans are behind this. Uh, they pick their own 15. They pick their own 15 people who they want their commission. But to make this fight more valid, uh, they pick people that look like us to to talk about this situation and say a thing about it. They're going to be held accountable. We were just told this week that uh, they, the the person that they picked to be a spokesman for the charter school is a member of one of our churches, St. Luke, and so. We're going to have to address that issue with him as well, historically. And, you know, we, we've we always had a situation where uh, people of color are picked to help fight the battles of the enemy. And so this is, this, we called them jigaboos back then, I said, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's still the same thing going on. We still get jigaboos to do what the master tells them to do, regardless of what's going on. Some of you may have seen some of these people out doing the election campaign ask you to sign a petition saying that you wanted to support the school district. But that wasn't true. They were With the petition that you were signing, because I know you didn't read it, was supporting this charter school. A lot of them were saying that you were getting, if they signed the papers, teachers would get raises. That's not true. Uh, again, it was the charter school uh, group that was out there that's giving you false information. So it's time for us to wake up and start telling people the truth about what's going on with this charter school uh, dog and pony show that the mayor is behind at the end of the day. Uh, mayor Mike Rollins, the um, uh, the DISD board member Mike Matt Rath, and of course your principal Mike Miles, who, who Sister Reggie calls the three blind mics, and so <laughs> and so those three blind mics are trying to change the school. You know, it's just amazing that it's the. How can you tell what's going on with DISD when you don't have kids that go to school there? That's just money, and that's what it's about at the end of the day, money. With a charter school, you get a right to say if your kid is, is going through some issues at home because, again, there's a genocidal attack on the black families, and we know that, and we can say that now. Uh, okay, if your kid's going through some social issues and the school don't want to deal with him, they, they can have a right to put him out, and there's not a word you can say about it. And with this new charter school thing, that's the same thing as, as bringing up this. They can put your kid out. Even if they don't like you, they can say, hey, get your kid out of here. There's not anything you can do. And so come on. There's, there's not anything that you can do. Uh, that you can do about it. They can put your kid out anytime they get ready. Uh, let me make this little announcement. Thursday morning at 5 a.m. is trying to get them to sign. Oh, well, uh, trying to get a petition. The, the mayor is trying to get them to sign a petition for the mayor on the uh, on the train on the train, saying he wants to help DISD. Those, that's what I just mentioned a few minutes ago. There were a lot of people. That that uh, that was signing. Don't sign those petitions if you don't read and see what they're talking about, because they're hiring people that look like you. Uh, so you can think that it's for you, but that's not true. And I'm not mad at those people who's trying to work, because unfortunately, uh, instead of this mayor working on economic development and jobs, people are going to try to work. And so I'm not telling you not to not to work for them. You can make your little money, make your little money. But at the end of the day, people read those petitions. Don't just sign it. Just Don't just take for granted that when people tell you something, it's true. Uh, they are trying to shut down our schools instead of trying to help our school come together. And like again, I said, it takes a village to raise a child. But if the village is destroyed, it doesn't matter. The child is going to be destroyed. So, Mr. Mayor, focus on creating economic development in the southern sector, in the Pleasant Grove community, in the West Dallas community, in the Oak Cliff community, by creating jobs, by bringing businesses in. And I know it's not just your say, it's the commissioner's say. All of you are people that look like us. Um, unfortunately, Pastor, if we can't get people that look like us to step up and fight for us, how are we going to ever get a chance to ever be anything? 
There needs to be held accountability. And although you might think you're getting away with it here, there's going to be another judge that you're going to have to deal with. So in the 21st century, can we please, next year, we need to get together and understand that you don't need to elect people because they're black. Because color has absolutely nothing to do with it. And historically, we've learned that sometimes we can be our own worst enemy. And I know y'all going to get mad because I said that, but you'll get over it. But the truth is, sometimes we can be our own worst enemy. We had a group of judges running this year that... Uh, uh, and I was proud that we had a lot of them, but it doesn't. It's not about color. It's about justice and righteousness. And a lot of those judges were white that needed to stay on that bench because they fought for true justice. And by the grace of God, we had a couple of them that did continue to to go on and end up succeeding and being reelected. And so at the end of the day, people, we've got to wake up. Harold Melvin got a song out that says, "Wake up, everybody! No more sleeping in bed. We got to get up out of this this bed and start thinking forward instead of backwards, like we can we've been doing, and start holding our elected officials accountable." If 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 I at running for an office and I don't tell you I'm going to do anything, what do you expect for me to do? Nothing. And that's exactly what's going on. We do have a, a list of, uh, and, and, and we get them in our office all the time at Justice Seeker Pastor. People complaining about city council members not saying a word, and there are some things that are going on, and, and uh, they're just being silent when it comes to representing our people. One of the other issues that uh, the city just had, they passed a law where you can only speak uh, once a month at city council. So how are you going to tell people what they can do and they take the taxes in this city, pay your salary, but you're telling them they can only speak to you once a month. And all you're going to do in those two minutes is say, okay, that's fine, and go. You, you're not, you don't have to address. People fought for us to have a right to be a voice. And we've got people that are sitting in that council seat that's allowing this to be passed. And it was because of this that they got a chance to even be a city council person. So it's just amazing of what's going on. You can give us a call, 972-647-1893. Don't be afraid. <laughs> you don't have to be ashamed or afraid. But uh, like Reverend Barnett, we, we speak the truth, and we tell the truth, and we get the truth out there. We don't have the the media that we need. We thank God for KNON and, and Reverend Barnett's show to allow us to get the truth out to the people. I know it's kind of early, but y'all ain't doing it on Saturday morning anyway. Get up. And, and, and listen to the radio so you can get the news. Just sit in the house all night long. Uh, but get up. The, the, again, this is, a, this is a, a great show, radio station, a great show that gets us the information out that we need to get out. And so this morning our conversation is about the DISD. You can give us a call on anything you need to talk about. We're talking about the city of Dallas not allowing you to be a voice again. And then we're going to also I want to talk to us about, Pastor, some of the things that are going on with our children. You know, when you look at the news, every day is going on. The last couple of days, we've had some tragic accidents that have taken place. Uh, the young man down in San Antonio who run over and killed those people, and our prayers go out to those people. Uh, he's he's had a historical record, and, and, and he's in his several people. Then in, in Denver, there was a young man that, that stole two or three cars while he's being chased by the police, and uh, and uh, he got away. And but up in Philadelphia, there was a young man who took his young son and drove his son, who's a baby, took him, and, and the police followed him. And uh, when they got up to the car, he stopped. He was stabbing himself in the, he was stabbing himself in the leg. And when the police walked up, he had his baby in his arm, stabbing his own self in the leg. The police shot him and killed him right there in the car, in Philadelphia. So we got a disparity on how we treat our criminals, and that's. I'm not saying these other two should have gotten anything done to them, but at the end of the day, uh, we we've got it. This is the result of not having fathers in our houses, Pastor. It, there is no way you can have a mother and father in your home and your sons and daughters are doing the things that they are doing. Uh, these people that were robbing these senior citizens in their homes, uh, the young African-American lady, and I'm going to say it because we need to talk about our own people. You know, you were wrong for doing what you did, and that's somebody's mother and daughter. But if you don't have a father, I don't. I know this is the 21st century, and y'all got a lot of, uh, a, a lot of, uh, Women that are doing a lot of things, and I appreciate them for doing a lot of things, but as long as until men rise, they're going to fall. That's right. If we don't rise, they are going to fall. And this is the result of not having a family. These young boys don't know how to be men. Uh, some of them don't. I'm not going to say all of them, but some of them, the majority of them don't. And these young women don't know what it's like to be a lady. You don't have to walk around in half naked. And all of a sudden, somebody that like you used to be, you went from the most beautifulest woman in the world to the most... Uh, uh, what is it when you put on a bunch of disguises? You, you, you to the most disguised woman in the world. You know what I mean? You don't even you, you you you're not proud of who you are. And if you don't, 
know you are. Can you? How can you ever be who you should be? We went from being a beautiful, one of the most beautiful women in the world, to now we're the most camouflaged woman in the world. Yeah. Young man told me on Halloween they don't have to buy anything because they put on makeup and disguises and fake. I don't know who told black women that black men like long hair. Even the abusive yeah. men don't like long hair because when he grab it, if it's fake, you gonna keep running. He's gonna hold your fake hair. So, you know, we got to wake our people up. Let's go to line three. We got Biddy on line three. Uh, good morning, Biddy. How you doing? Good morning. Now, I'm really enjoying the show. <laughs> yes, well, thank you. I, thank you. I, I'm really enjoying it. And it's uh, in any way that I can be a part of it, I would love to be a part. Well, that, I appreciate it. And you are a part of it. What, 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 what do you think about our conversation, our topics that we're talking about today? Uh, yes, and that's that's what we need. And whether they get mad or not, the truth is pure, and it don't need no help. And you're telling us the truth. It's time for us to wake up. Got to wake up and, and start teaching these kids in a way that they'll learn. And even right. as, as pastors, me and my, 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 my pastor here, uh, we got to start teaching what we preach. Uh, so we can get to these people because, like I said, uh, our, 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 the most beautiful woman in the world now is in disguises. And, and I don't care what these movie stars and actors and songwriters, you don't have to dress like the prostitute in order for somebody to respect you and, and recognize you. Know, if, if Beyonce is as great a singer as she is, she don't have to shake her behind. We don't, when we want to be entertained, we want to be entertained. We don't want to go, we can go to topless bars and things if we want to see that kind of stuff. And so our women are teaching our our children, you know, past I see little kids, everyday little girls with makeup on. It's not their time. And what makes you think you could rob them in their lives by putting makeup on little girls and, and, and these false hands, making them look like they grown? They deserve to live a, live a life of a child just like you did and just like all of us did. But we've got a generation that wants to rush and, and, and think that in order for you to think I'm all of that, I got to shake and, and, and show me show my body parts. These are things that used to be a one-on-one -on -one thing. No, now, it, 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 and what they don't realize is that turns men off from women when yeah, they see you start yeah. doing that. That's the sad you, part. See, if you don't have respect yourself, how can you rebirth respect? Absolutely. Absolutely, Ben. And, that's the, and that goes for black people overall. If y'all don't respect yourself, yeah. how do you expect other people to respect you? Exactly. Exactly. That charity starts at home and then it's shedded abroad. So you got to start learning to respect yourself. You got to, even like I said, a lot of our pastors don't say certain things and don't do certain mm -hmm. things, Pastor, because they're scared they'll lose their offering and their tithes. Right. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You got to preach this gospel, raise these children, teach these kids how to do what they're supposed to do, teach women how to be women, uh, teach those with the altered lifestyle. Okay, this is the hospital, keep coming, but you're gonna get a medicine when you get in here. I, you know, a lot of us won't preach about alternative lifestyles, Pastor, because yeah. we're scared we lose our choir director, our piano player. Right. We don't preach about gluttony because half of us weigh 500 pounds, and all of these things are what the Bible is talking about. we got to preach the gospel. We cannot compromise it, and when you do, these are the results of what you get. Yes, and I just want to say anything that I can do to be supportive, I'm there. And yeah. my sister, uh, Mary Jones, they have a... Uh, um, Things that they have at this church of uh, anger management, and there are a lot of our kids there. They're angry inside, and they don't have any kind of outlet. A lot of kids don't have uh, sisters or brothers, you know, anyone to uh, relate to and uh, share with. And so I, I was telling her that uh, she really needs to talk with you, and and uh, get that church to be supportive, you know. Of the show, so you know, if you will, can, can she speak with you for a minute and give her uh, well, her voice to it? Tell you what to do. Just stay on the line. We got a break coming up, and she can talk to Pastor when she gets back. Just hold on one second for us, Ben, and we'll be right back. All righty, we're back. I'm Reverend Ronald Wright, sitting in for the Reverend Marion Barnett, and our prayers go out to not feeling very this well this morning. And Church of Communion Forum, uh, we still got Benny on the line this morning. Let's go back to Benny. Okay, Benny, are you there? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, uh, just want to add to what 
the discussion was prior to the commercial. Okay. Uh, uh, and and with our women, with our children, what we when they say that the older women teach the younger women, we are failing in that category because our we are losing our young people. What do you we, What do you think that is? We are, because when we forgot forgotten the church, we forgotten our root. Okay. We we gotta get back. It's good that we're progressing. Life is about change, but some of those things that you grew up grew up with that I I grew up with, we need those things again. We don't have any principles anymore. Well, one of any them morals, any what, scruples. Yeah, one of them is that we took the S off of parents. <laughs> and that is parent. Uh, God made man and woman together to raise families, and that, that's where the family comes in at. And parents, mothers and fathers, and that's what raised our children, regardless of whatever color you were from. And we had God in our lives. And, you know, Eli Whistle was a Jewish man who spoke about how people who remain silent, silence doesn't help the tormented it helps the tormentor, and so we allowed a lot of things to go on in our lives, and we never said a word. First of all, you can't, I shouldn't have never been able to come into your house and tell you how to raise your children. I would have died from the whoopings that I didn't get, because it taught me to respect each other. We, we would have taught as children to say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, out of respect. Uh, these children, you know, these young men now walk around, and I see them every day holding their pants up. There's no way I could have been around my father with my pants sagging. I'd have, I'd have been in a wheelchair. You never would have got to see my legs again. But these things were dismissed and re destroyed because we destroyed the family. We did. We we destroyed the family. And whether whether uh, yes sir, no sir, yes ma'am, no sir, it's a thing of the past. Uh, because uh, I've been I kind of work in an after school program, and I have little pre K kids. And when you ask them a question, their response is yes, no. There's no no ma'am, no yes ma'am. And the thing of it is, and you can be 80 years old and you get the same response. So we got to put on, it came from their parents. They, they didn't have any, and the parents are probably before them. Well, you know your 12-year-old girl can't be a parent. So when she has a baby at 12 years old, what do you expect to come out of it? Well, grandmother's 25. And, you know, that's a shame that we've allowed, we said that that was okay. We sit back silently and said that that was okay. And then so as those little 12-year-old, 13-year-old girls start having babies, they become a part of this governmental thing and Section 8. And so now the government has control over them and tell them what they can and cannot do instead of saying, don't have no more babies, get your education, go to college, and so you can be some. They they sit back and allow them to continue having babies and before you know it we've got a whole generation of children who don't know what it's like to have parents in their lives and if my mama wasn't didn't wasn't old enough or mature enough to be a woman how is she going to teach me how to be a woman amen amen so we we uh uh Oh, this is going to be a good one here. So, so again, like I said, charity starts at home, and we can't, we got to start teaching these kids in a way that they'll understand, and we cannot compromise how we are raising our children. And like you said initially, is that we had God in our lives. Uh, a, a lot of children I see, and, 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 I, and I bring to my church young people, and, and I ask them questions. A lot of them don't have a clue because they haven't been told. Can't get mad at the kid. We got to get mad at those who were able to or should have been raising them up. And because they didn't raise them up, we need to let our mayor know that our village is destroyed. So you need to focus on helping build our village back up again so we can help raise our children. Thank you for your call, sister. And uh, 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 we thank God for what you're doing in your program. And we need other young ladies to reach out and grab these young ladies and teach them how to be women. All right, let's go to line four with Miss Hawkins. Miss Hawkins, are you there? Hello. Hello. Oh, good morning. How are you, uh, Reverend Wright, sir? 
I am doing good. I'm fine. How are you doing, Sister Hawkins? All right. Thank you. Fine. Thank you for taking my call. I know I'm calling too much, but I'm going to dial on it. Uh, and to Reverend Barnett, good morning to you. Uh, but I'm looking at it. I said they were saying Texas was the last to integrate the schools. So maybe they're still working on that. But I just really feel that six decades after the Board of uh, uh, Education, Brown versus Board of Education, this is the new Jim Crow, what they're doing down at DISD, one of the largest school districts in the world. This is a new gym called, called resegregation, where, they, where they're getting ready to definitely do that. But in my mind, I feel like it's the Willie Lynch paper still being circulated under the table. What do you, in effect. And what do you think about that as a family? That how we, and like I said, we initially, our first school started from home and then the church and then the school. But since That's we've it, eliminated... You know what? Yes, sir, I'm sorry. No, no go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, and then I'm looking at we got to watch when people talk about they want to succeed, succeed as a state from the union. Education is a great place to start since it's so large. Like I said, when you passing them papers under the table, this Willie Lynch getting ready to do this Jim Crow, uh, this resegregation out of the Board of Education, we're still talking about this six decades later. Uh, th this is a problem. So this will be an easy way for them to slide the next papers in and succeed and really wear our behinds out once they, once they try to strip themselves from the federal government totally. But they're not already not accepting no money for these entitlements out here for people to live. Right. We would need the, the, the at the bottom entitlements if you would give them what was already there. They never have given them what was already there as people. The freedmen found themselves barred from most public places, schools, and res residential areas and towns, too. This was in the 19th century. Look at what we're doing in the 21st. But I want to say this, too, if, if, if it's okay for me to say it. I believe you, Ray Nagin, and Freak uh, Kwame. I'm, I'm looking at how they didn't destroy Detroit. They was already putting this paperwork on the table with GM Ford and all That's the rest right. of them with this money. Understand what I'm saying? But then they blamed it on Kwame and get this man 20 years. Are we serious? Now, okay, granted, I'm not going to get into the fact that, you know, sometimes you got to suffer some consequences, but to get somebody really life in his 40s like that is, is, was totally unacceptable and unnecessary. Well, you know, the I'm unfortunate saying, part... Physically, yes, sir. You know, the unfortunate part about that, and, 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 and when we discussed it, there has to be an accountability. Now, Kwame, they, 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 they pitched him out a little minnow, and he grabbed that minnow, yeah. and, and it cost yeah. him 40 yeah, years of his life. He shouldn't go at people, but they got a fund for him. I'm looking into it. I don't know all the deals on it. But look up Kwame Kip Patrick there. You can help him and his family because really they, they had a they had a uh, they had some going on where I know they wasn't all at fault with this. But physically, I'm just saying uh, physically, uh, he could have never done more than they allow with that money. They, Absolutely, that and that same we thing we doing up there. Uh -huh. That same thing is applying to our elected officials today. Uh, we have a history of some elected officials that have been caught up uh, at the end of the day. Uh, and, uh, and then Jesse Jackson Jr., hold on. We on your side. Hold on a minute. <laughs> that was another one. But let me say this, too, uh, and I, I, I hate to touch on this subject, but it breaks my heart because, you know, a lot of times if we can't be moral and have morals as we mature exactly. as adults and professionals, we can pretend like we have compassion on people. And I looked at the George Zimmerman situation. You know, of course, everybody has. And I looked at the, the George Zimmerman's attorneys, and as this woman and this man was mourning for their child, Come on, y'all. We don't even want to. We, we'll cry with our enemies for somebody's kids, y'all. They, as they were mourning for their for they child, the opposite opposition gets on the, the, the social media, with spread worldwide, licking on ice cream. Y'all, this is how they feel about it. Well, here's the thing they, about they, that. They put, they put a popsicle on the, the, the ice cream on their mouth. That was, that, that was straight up. See, I'm looking at the subliminal message of the situation. That was straight up disrespect. Here, this woman morning, but you put your kids on, take them out of ice cream. It didn't have nothing to do with the wind that he thought he, that he had. It was, it, that, was, that was a but, message. Well, here's the thing. Right here. Not only have they laughed at us with our marches, y'all, they financed them. Well, here's the thing, about, here's the thing about that. Here's the thing about that, Sister Hawkins. Is if we don't respect ourselves, how are we going to allow other people to respect us? You know, we can talk about the George Zimmerman thing, but what about the crimes that are committed in our communities? The black on black crimes. These two young boys that just recently raped a 13 year old deaf girl. Mm -hmm. See, we need to be held accountable for the things that we do to ourselves. You we know, like don't that, have to be. Yeah. We, I mean, we, it, don't you know if you don't respect yourself, nobody else is going to ever respect you? And so well, we they made a big deal about the George Zimmerman thing, which was, was wrong. Mm -hmm. But every day here in Texas, at Justice Seekers Texas, we fight the injustices that are going on. And we deal with the fact that we commit crimes to ourselves and nobody say a word. We should be up in arms at this young 13-year-old girl at a park playing and raped by two 13-year-old boys. We should be up in arms about that. Well, see, we should be up 
Jeff and all's all told about the funding of the lack of funding for our, for our mental health areas in, in the hood too. Well, that was under that was under Dr. Reagan's <laughs> administration. Dr. Reagan eliminated that. But uh, uh, one more thing that you mentioned, and I got another lot. But one more thing that you mentioned is yeah. that. We 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 should be held to, not only should we be held accountable for the things that we do to ourselves, but you know we got it. We we all went to Florida, but passing to Florida, there were several families that were going through the same thing that George Zimmerman was going through, and nobody said a word. And so, and and, and then here again, uh, back on my mail again, I want to say something about that. We live in a society now that we used to when, when we committed a crime it was the Texas Department of Correctional, and we would we would say you're going to be forgiven once you do your time and go out and turn your life around. Now here in Texas, that opportunity is not given to you. It went from Texas Department of Correctional to Texas Department of Criminal. We want to, we want, they want us to continue to have that mindset of even though we all make mistakes and none of us are perfect, and at the end of the day, the judge that we should be afraid of is up in heaven. It sure ain't sitting down in somebody's court. Well, they said they, can make, they said they can make you feel like you're nothing. They can keep you as nothing because they, Absolutely. they control the vision. If they can control what your area look like and you feel like it ain't nothing until you come out of there and you're looking at that every morning, every night, they can con literally can control the vision. And so you those... Are, what I'm saying? That's why we have to and heighten and enlarge our vision as a people. And we we still, do have to stick together. That's right. And we got people who, who, who made mistakes 20 years ago and still that mistake is hunting them well, I'm because one of, they I'm, one of, I'm, one of, I'm one of I'm still asking for help out here myself I'm still looking after after all these years as a younger 18 doing what I'm doing and out here when you got all the school and I can get to better my own mind my own vision and my own mind even though and I'm they still in, won't in, give you an opportunity you know, areas, they still won't give me when I'm still looking but we Lord. still fighting and in the meantime while we're doing that we're going to keep giving out this real life information on my end and then of course the leaders like yourself everybody and the other people that come on and that are hosting the show uh, are doing a great job. But I want to say this before I go, I know you got other people on the call. As they do this mayor, I know they got some great uh, uh, other spiritual leaders that are coming in for this mayor thing they bring here to Dallas. Uh, Y'all need to be in there. Y'all must be in there because... If well, they're not know, inviting us. Here. They're not inviting us. They don't want. They don't want to. They don't want to tell. Re, they don't want real people in there who fight and deal with racism on a daily basis. I have much respect for some of the brothers in the clergy. Well, most of our brothers in the clergy, but you can't talk to me about something that you don't deal with on a daily basis. And so to bring those pastors in that they're going to bring in to talk about racism, confirm that it's another dog and pony show because they're not dealing with the people who deal with it on a daily basis. Let me get. Let me get this other call. Thank you, Sister Hawkins, and we'll talk. But. Uh, we're going to go to line one and get Stephen. Uh, but, uh, again, they're not bringing in people who deal with this on a daily basis. They're bringing in because they name these, these men of God's name, and they think people are going to get excited. That, that has nothing to do with what our people are dealing with and going through on a daily basis. Let's go to line one and get a hold of Stephen. How you doing this morning, Stephen? How you doing? All right. You doing all right this morning? Oh, yeah, I'm doing real well. I'm enjoying the conversation I'm having today. But I want to put my little input in here. Okay. My, my thinking part of the problem is the doctrine that we are being taught, especially in the schools. If you touch your, your children, you're going to jail, and they're teaching them to tell it on that, all that old kind of stuff. That's man. initially what I talked about earlier, Stephen. I said the first time they came in our household and told us what we needed to do with our kids, nobody stood up and yep. said, you're not going to tell us what to do with our kids because we've been raising our kids. But, but that was all a part of, uh, everything that's done evil is a part of a design. Eventually, that was going to trickle into the schools when they done segregation because uh, a lot of people didn't want black folk whooping their kids. I'm going to tell right. you that right now. So it started from right. that, and, and, and but it started in the house. So I say, in order for me to say, you can't whoop my kid in school, I'm going to stop you from whooping your kid at, at home. Now, how in the world would a three-year-old, a, a, a seven- or eight-, nine-year-old kid call the police because you got a whooping for something you did, and the police yeah. come up and take you to jail for yeah, doing something absolutely. to your kid? But we never had one leader. See, there's a difference Dang. between lead, uh, uh, black leaders of, uh, and leading blacks. And I'm just talking about black folk because I am. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a difference. Black leaders are picked by people. Leading blacks are chosen That's by right. God. That's a difference. That's right. But we never okay, had now. one stand up and say, how are you going to tell us how to raise our children? Uh, you know why? Because you just said it. Ain't now one of these folks, and I'm going to take it a little further, and all of them get mad at them if they want to. <laughs> these preachers need to find out who God is. <laughs> That's true. Stop That's falling true. down to, to the edicts of this government. And find out who God is. Who should we obey? God or man? We That's start, what's wrong. We, These preachers are scared. They scared to death. They uh, I'm telling you what I know because I've been in these churches and listen to what they're saying. They scared to death of what government might do if they stand up and tell the truth. 
Well, and that's unfortunate because you couldn't compromise the gospel. But we've we, we've we've had nobody to stand up and say, "How are you going to tell us how to raise our children?" And because right. we did, even when even when let me tell you something. Years ago, cocaine was a rich man's high. Uh, right. That that was no there's no way cocaine could have been afforded in the inner cities because it was a rich man's high. And when right. they start trickling this crack cocaine into the community, not one person. Not one preacher, not one elected official say you won't bring that stuff in our community. And to no. this day, I want to know why. Why they nobody stood up and said, why are you bringing this into our community? When initially, no. when it was cocaine, it was the rich man's eye. We couldn't, we, we had nothing to do with it. Why nobody stood up and said, stop bringing this drugs into our community? I was leaders, I was preachers. All they wanted to get an extra dollar. So they can look good in the front of everybody. And, and that's that's, that's where that scripture for the, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Money that's has right. compromised our our community and our leaders and those that have chosen to be our leaders. But we gotta we we're gonna have to save a generation of kids and we're that's gonna right. lose whole, the churches are are falling apart because we're not reaching out and grabbing that next generation right. of kids. It's not about us. It's about the that's next generation. That's right. And if we well, can we gotta start teaching these children and teaching them in a way where they can understand. Not compromise, but where right. they can understand. And, and you that's know right. we, we we you know we still selling drugs in our community we can tell the dope pusher to stop pushing the dope, but you know what? The dope user needs to stop using the dope. That's if right. he stops using the dope, then the drug pusher is going to be out of business. That's and right. so, but we've never had anybody stand up and tell our children that. Even on, in my neighborhood, the children walk down the street, they ain't passing, but I, don't come by and sag, and they pull their pants up. Because it's a yeah. matter of respect that they are taught. Now, I love them yeah. to death, and I do whatever they ask me to do if they need something. But you're going to learn how to respect me and other neighbors That's in the right. community. Don't come down here sagging. If you need a bed, I'm going to get you one. When I was a middle school assistant uh, at one of the middle schools, the kids that had sagging pants, I would get these wire knots, the tire, yeah. tire knots, and I would tie them up, and they couldn't get them off until they got to the house. And I'd tie them up so tight on them, they said, next day, Pastor, I got my bed on. Okay, that's what you need to do. But we need right. to teach it. We're going to we, we, cut up on a break right quick. But, Stephen, I appreciate your call, uh, but we'll be right back in a few minutes. Welcome back to KNON Church and Community Forum. I'm Reverend Ronald Wright, Executive Director of Justice Seekers, Texas, Pastor, Senior Pastor of God's Community Church of Joy. Sitting in for Reverend Marion Barnett, my chairman of the board. Uh, Pastor's not feeling good, so I'm going to ask that you pray for him this morning. Uh, so he had to leave, and so uh, we're here taking, we're here standing in for him this morning by the grace of God. I want to thank all you callers. I want to come in and as our producer this morning. Listen, let's go back to the line and get a hold to Ike Steen. Brother Ike Steen. No, this is Tony. Okay, Tony. Okay, Tony, right. good morning. How you doing this morning, brother? All right, all right, Reverend. Well, Reverend, the thing about this, is the beauty about having this mission out now that you have many voices for the input on it. Okay. I read an article in Dallas Morning News in the back pages where this Spanish guy broke it down to where the things that this group is suggesting they're going to do, the ISD can do right now. They don't even need to stay to, to they don't need to change it. And his issue was, you know, because they're saying why you want to change it, number one. Right. You know, but, but the fact of it is that if you break out the statistics, many whites do not put their kids in charter schools. And the kids who go to, go to the magnet schools now are not going to go to those schools if it becomes a charter school system. And, and, and when you hear, like, Ron Kirk is supporting this, you know, because the paper had, it, had his name mentioned. He is. Uh, and, and and the reality is this: you want to change the system, cool. Well, it's like you said earlier: people who want to change don't put their kids in, in, in the school system. The, the same people who are advocating to you, their grandkids are not going to die at these schools. Exactly. So how do you? Then, how you? Well, that's my thing: is Tony, how are you going to tell us how we need to do our children in school when your children don't attend these schools? What makes yeah. you think you should be a voice? over what's going on in our community is if we're not educated uh, or, or we are not intelligent enough to decide what's going on. If the, if the school board is not doing what they're doing, that's why we have a right to vote and vote school board people in there and hold them accountable for what needs to be done in our school. But for, for someone to come in and say, we're going to teach you how to, how, to, how, to, how to teach your kids, and, and it, that's, that's just a dog and pony show in a way of, of, of dictatorship. And, and what I want to add is this. Many in the black community, not many, 
a seven percent of the black community leaders, kids, Wild well, Creek was one of them, went to Hockaday. Hockaday paid the private school. Where is Hockaday at? Where is Hockaday located? It's in North Dallas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, they went to, some, some of these people went to St. Mark's, you know. And my thing is, I'm not, I'm not saying that there's nothing wrong with putting your, putting your kids in the school that, that you want to go to, but the reality is this. You want to make changes because you cannot control the ID money. Exactly. So, 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 and so what you have is, well, we need to change them to a charter school system so we can have more regulation, basically to control the, the school and the teacher's tuition, you know, the teacher's pay, and to be able to say, okay, you know, because uh, we, we know we're running this. You know, and and it's not just that, Tony. They can also they can also raise up the tax to any amount that they want to raise the tax up to uh, uh, without, you know, they can also decide whether or not they want your kid in their school. If they, if you, they might get up and, and, and decide, they see you you actually accidentally run over them in, in, yesterday in school, they decide they don't want your kid there the next day. You don't have a voice. And so why we want to give you dictatorship over, um, again, like I said, taxes, taxation without representation. is So you can take my money, but I don't have a voice? And, and, and I'm going to add this. To, we know who's running this. People in, in Highland Park, the people who kids are not going to, but, you know, what well, they're back. The ones who want to go to the, the best schools, send their kids to the uh, Booker T. Washington, to the town of you. Right, you know, right. Those ones. But the reality is, is this. These people said policies, and, and they hide behind businesses. And you know what? I, I don't never never understood this. Businesses keep saying they are missing. Uh, on, you know, they want a good education system, so so they can, uh, you know, can, can have people come here and move here and put their kids in the, from the school system. Well, all the money that's in this proper of dollars, you can all these businesses cannot put an actual fund together. Sure, they can. Waiting. And, 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 and then, and then, with black community and the Hispanic community, is this: we have teachers who are retired, we pay them a stipend or some kind of what's name to tutor out of school. This is something that is already in place. If you did these two things, that have that money, any money put into a, a fund, and then you pay the retired school teachers money to come in to tutor because they already better the system, and they can uh, nurture some of these kids before out of school. And have some of the churches open up, you know, uh, to where exactly in, in the neighborhood. Yeah, so exactly. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Let's go to line two and get hold to Ike Steen. Good morning, brother Ike. Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing fine, sir. Well, I'm enjoying the program and uh, listening to a lot of things you were saying. And I think this thing about the uh, homeschool rule thing that we're not understanding is they want us to vote to give away our vote. Exactly. So to give away our right to vote, you know, because when this thing is finalized and we vote on it, we are voting saying we don't want any say-so, so we're giving away our vote. So, and, you know, like you said, we got to start holding people accountable for we have elected to represent us, you know, because this, this shouldn't have slipped up on us like this. Well, and, and the, we, the caller just said that Ron Kirk uh, it was, was a part of bringing this uh, uh, situation uh, to this, and, I, and we're and we're investigating. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who who brought it. Uh, 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 I, this is a, again a, a part of a, the voters' rights violation again to take our voices. Now, if we took our children and said, you know what, we go homeschool our kids, it would shut this school district down All because right. they're not saying, saying anything. What I'm saying is, uh, it don't make no difference. It was a wrong or whoever brought it. It's a bad deal, and. Whether it's a black man brought it or a white man or a Hispanic man or woman, we don't want it. So that's what we got to understand. And you were saying a while ago about these elected officials holding them accountable, and it's not about black and white, because we had some judges that was in seats that were doing good things that wasn't African American. So, and holding everybody accountable is what we need to do. Now, I'll say this, and a lot of people on this radio ain't gonna like what I'm finna say, but. A couple of weeks ago, on this very program, I was invited down to the district attorney office to discuss a situation about my son's case. I didn't ask to be invited. I was told to come down there on that following Monday morning and discuss it, and I, I even said over the radio that I didn't want to come down there and couldn't get in. Okay, and I was who, giving a phone number. Who was that? 
Who was that? That uh, uh, this is this attorney. He did it. And what happened? Nothing happened. They didn't see me. They didn't let me come down there. Told me don't come until I get a call from them. And it's been two weeks. I haven't received a phone call. And every time I call, everything is the same. He's not in. Don't come down until you hear from us. So oh. it could be I could be uh, dead in my grave before I hear from these people. So I'm, I'm you know, I, they called me out on the radio, told me to man up. And I think I did a pretty good job of speaking my piece, but, uh, you know, if they didn't want to meet with me, just say you don't want to meet with me. Don't tell me to come down and meet with you. Then just, you know, I'm, I'm used to that. Ever since I've been fighting my son's case going on 10 years, I'm used to politicians, uh, elected officials, ministers, and everybody else keeping me on hold. But I'm not going to hold. I'm going to move on. And, and that's a good thing. To get, yeah, whatever it takes to get the job done. And that's I'm a good thing, but would it, would it have been easy, Ike, for them to just simply say, there's nothing I can do for you? Yeah, and don't tell me what he told me to. Well, I think what it, it was said to get me off the radio, really. You know, because we were trying to get into a confrontation about who's right and who's wrong. So to end it, I was told to come down to the district attorney's office Monday morning. Blam, that's it. That never happened. They want to see me. They don't want to talk to well, me. Well, the election going on, or maybe he was going through the election, the reason why he couldn't meet you. What Was the election over with? The election was Tuesday. I was told to come down on Monday. Oh, okay. Before the election, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So, I, right, mean, I, I mean, I ain't got so no... So, what do you reason. think about those accountabilities of elected officials? I mean, and, and this is when I say... We got charity starts at home. We got to start holding ourselves accountable and responsible for what's going on because for many years, the uh, African Americans were not in those seats. And we cried that they were being racist and they were wrong. And at the end of the day, when you do get them in there, the same thing still applies. Well, let me say this right here. Uh, a lot of our elected officials, especially local, they have this thing about holding people in seats accountable. But the, on the back side of that is, when you hold them accountable, then they want to put a spin off on it that uh, you just trying to pull a black man down and you just hating on this man because he got this position. And, you know, in other words, kind of like a reverse discrimination thing. They try to make you look like the villain instead of the victim. So when we do this, you know, I, I didn't have uh, plenty of elected officials accountable for stuff that they said and didn't do. But it's always like, well, the white man been doing it. Uh, you know, we always try to throw a spin on it instead of, Sticking to our gun and say, "Look, well, let me ask you, you." Say, "Wait, let me ask you this question: well, How can we blame the white man when you've got people that look like you in those positions?" Well, I'm saying that's what they say, you know. Uh, but what do you think about that? What do you think about that? You got a black chief of police, you got a black district attorney, you got black city councilmen, black commissioners, uh, black uh, senators. So, so what's the racial about that? I mean, why is well, it that you're still struggling and going through the... I hear the same songs that I heard when when whites had those positions. So why why is it that we're still going through the same motions? Well, why are we still going through Jim Crow, which is what you're saying, because we putting people in positions that... And some of, all of them are not bad. All our elected officials are not bad. Right. A lot of them are trying to do a good job. Right. But you got this circle of individuals that feel like they got everything sewed up and... Nothing comes through unless it's filtered through them, and that's the problem now. But you vote for them every you You vote to elect them, and a lot of them are elected simply because of name uh, recognition. But if we pulled our statistics and said, okay, show me what you've done over the last five or ten years, how shocked would you think you would be at, if, if we took a, a demographics on what those elected officials done? Well, look at some of the contracts they got. Look at some of the businesses they got. Look at some of the things they're involved in, and look at what they're doing for you. Look at where they live at and where you live at. And you know, we vote for them. You know, to be an elected, uh, be an elected official, you are a servant. They're like a pastor in a church is a servant, not a dictator. Okay. So this thing need to have a spin on it. If you are a pastor, your job is to serve the people, not the people to serve you. That's if true. you are elected official, from the White House down to the jailhouse, if you are elected official, you're supposed to serve the public, not the public serve you. You dictate to us what you want instead of us dictating to you what we want. We're the most strongest group it is. We're the voters. We're the taxpayer. Well, let me ask you this one question. Vote. Let me okay. ask you this. I, okay, I've got some Kevin on line one. Let me ask you this. What do you think about the 
meetings of racial uh, uh, amongst the city of Dallas held by the mayors and these city councilmen, and they're going to have this great convention where they're bringing the mega pastors in to talk about racism in this city. What do you think about that? We bring the mega pastors in. The mega pastors do not live in your community. They live out and around the suburban areas or in, in lavish homes with acres and acres of properties. They're not going through the train you going through. The, the, they don't feel your pain. They just roll up in their limousine, and when they get ready to go, the armored car roll up and get the money, and them and the money leave your community, and then you go back home and call Reverend Barnett or call Reverend Wright and complain about what's going on. That's what's happening. Okay. Well, all right, I got some more line on the line. On the line, I, I appreciate your call, brother. Yeah, keep up the good work, and God bless, and have a good one. You do the same. Thank you. Okay, let's go to line one and get Kevin. Good morning, Kevin. Hey, how, how are you all doing this morning? We're doing great this morning. How you doing? <clears throat> I, I can't complain. I'm in the St. Louis area. I did live in Dallas for okay. 20-some years, and this is a global problem that we're dealing with. The same issues that you're talking about now are the same issues that they're, that they're dealing with in, in St. Louis as well. Wow. As a matter of fact, they have a um, a school district that they have declared bankrupt, and they're transferring students from that district to another district, and they're going to force that district to pay for the transportation costs. So it's driving it into bankruptcy. As a matter of fact, uh, the, the gentleman who was superintendent at one time in Wilma Hudgens, I can't think of his name right now, he was the superintendent there, and they brought in, they merged it with a poor, another uh, another district that was really, really financially poor, which caused the resources to be drained from that system, and it caused it to go into bankruptcy. And I cannot think of this, this brother's name, but at one time, he was the superintendent of Wilma Hutchins, was that the same young man that was the, and I can't think of his name right now, but he was he the superintendent when they initially shut that school down the first time they shut down William Hunter? He, I believe so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he, you know, look, we made, our, and this is my opinion now, you know, we made our mistake, a lot of things in integration. When we gave up our culture and bought into someone else's and made it feel, and make to make it really tells you that you feel like other people's, uh, the way they do things are superior to your mindset. And I feel like, personally, we need to look at this integration stuff, and there were some good things that happened that it did bring about. That's true. That but is it true. has destroyed our children. It's destroyed our history. We can't even run a grocery store in our own neighborhoods. We have to have Arabs and Indians, and all of that other thing. One last thing, and because I, I don't want to think of well, you, well, let me ask you a question, and you make a very, very valid point when you when you say those things, and that applies to us here in Dallas. But at the end of the day, and you were right, because I was one of the first generation of people who were forced bust into integration. But let me ask you something. What does that have to do with the fact that, as a people, we still don't, raise and teach and teach our children the history of where we came from and if we don't know where if they don't know where they came from how can they know where they're going even though we have, we were forced to go and learn somebody else's we knew where we came from and what we went through why is it that we don't educate and teach our children our history instead of not history his story but our story because they feel because honestly we think that we're inferior to these other folks. Well, that's we obviously really not true. <laughs> that's obviously no, not no, true. No, no, like no, you no. said, <laughs> we don't own anything in our communities. Like you said, we don't. You mean to tell me we spend millions and millions of dollars, but we can't own stores in our community? Reverend, we don't think that we can do it. We don't think that you you've been around enough, and you know what right, I'm saying right. is the truth. We don't think that we can do it. Why do we have that because, mindset? Where do we get that mindset from? It it it, comes, it goes right back to the oppression and slavery. And like Carter Woodson said, if you can control the person's thinking, you can make them do and feel however you want to. Now, what the solution is, 
is that we're going to have to dig down hard and, and, and make some real decisions that's going to hurt, but we're going to have to do it. One thing, and you'll see it, everyone is watching over the weekend, we have to begin to take our young people, and especially the men, out of these predominantly white universities and send them back to the black ones. They're making billions of dollars off of our young men who are not getting educated, and the black universities are going out of business. Well, I, we, we got a break, Kevin. I mean, uh, Kevin, I want you to stay on the line. We got a break till I come back because I've got something I want to add to that comment. So stay on the line. We got a break. We'll be right back. All right. We're back on our second half of the hour. And Reverend Ronald Wright, Executive Director of Justice Seekers, Texas, Pastor of God's Community Church of Joy, and Ann is my producer this morning. I'm sitting in for Pastor Barnett, who's got a little ill today, and so we're going to keep him in prayer and hope that he feels much better a little bit later on this evening. Uh, we got uh, Kevin still on line one. Kevin? Kevin, are you there? Hello. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I was, uh, and, I, and, and I like what you just said while ago. But I wanted to share with you. We were looking at some statistics the, the the other day, and, but there are more young black men in college than there are in prison, and that's a good thing. Uh, yeah, and, not necessarily in county and, jail, but in prison, that, and that's a good thing. Yeah, and, and a lot of this stuff you can't. You have a lot of this stuff you can't believe. You have to have your own statistics. That's right. That's true. We need to do. Look, have you? Are you familiar with Chuck Wade Lamumba? Yes, I am. You know, he just died. Yeah, I just say he did. Yes, and and it's a lot of it's, it's a lot of uh, people are suspecting that he may have been murdered. But for people who are not familiar with what he was doing, he became the mayor of Jackson, Mississippi, and is eighty two percent black. And he had an agenda to turn that thing around. And, and and now he was also very radical in that he was proposing five states in Southeast United States, the Malcolm X movement, to become black state. And even though he, he always voiced that, even during his his mayoral candidacy and all of that, and he never gave that up, but he was able to uh, become elected. Now, he also was saying that he wanted everyone, everyone to be included in, what, in the progress of Jackson, Mississippi. Yes. So, you know, he showed that you can do things. Now, if you correlate that, the black state, to the state of Israel, black people don't even think that way. Well, no, they don't. I, I you agree know, with and, you and, on that. I agree with you on that. Have, we have to do like everyone else. Everyone else in this nation, every group of people, build a nation within a nation. Well, until we we we, till we 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 need to start educating ourselves and educating our. I mean, I mean that's the that's just like even though they say you can't discipline your kid at home, that don't mean you can't sit your kid down and say, let me tell you the history of your people, because a lot of generations don't know their history, and that's where it starts with in the house. But we got to get the family back together and and and, and go from there. Uh, well, I, got, I got I got a whole bunch of calls. Thank you for your call, Kevin, and uh, uh, and, and God bless you. All right, let's go to line four and Sandra. Good morning. Good morning. Is this Sandra Crenshaw? It is. All it right, is. How are Crenshaw. You? How in the world are you doing? Uh, good, good, good. Uh, several lots things. Lots of problems. Lots of problems on the loan with this um, CISD uh, takeover and this PR. I tell you, this mayor is the. Biggest PR person that I have ever experienced in my 40 years here in Dallas. What do you think Everything about that? Everything for him is a PR thing. Well, it, it, it's not surprising uh, because when the Dallas Morning News and the mayor hosted the first series on race relation and they had Michael Sorrells up there and Reverend T.D. Jakes talking about the relation, what a lot of people don't know is that the people that live in Highland Hills around Paul Quinn College uh, District have filed a complaint against uh, Michael Sorrells with HUD over that little shopping strip. Okay. The little shopping strip there because uh, the people there do not have a copy center. They don't have a barbershop, a beauty shop a grocery store, a cleaners, or a washateria. What did and they put the size there? of a small town. Beg pardon? What did they end up putting in that area? Was it some kind of adult club or something in that community? 
Well, what they bought was another beer and wine store that was owned by um, some foreigners. Whose district that is came that? came into the community. It's City Council District 8. But Who's that council, why, Who's that council person? Uh, Janelle Lacken. Okay. And um, for him to bring uh, Michael Sorrells, who was in conflict with the community. He first started out being in conflict with the community when the people in the community was in support of having their water bill reduced with that flow control over at the garbage, uh, at, the, at the landfill. Remember that? Right, I remember that. Okay, and then Michael Sorrell, I say he prostituted the Paul Quinn College students, had them out there picketing, and we go like, where did these kids get these T-shirts? Where do these kids get these professionally made signs for them? And who paid the $2,000 for their protest permit? It was the, the opposition. And so we, 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 we first got into conflict with him about that, Harold Cox and Marvin Crenshaw. And I went over there and met with him and said, you know, ask for an environmental study. But right now we're trying to get some money into the community, and we think this is a good thing. So then we got into conflict about the little shopping strip that Coma Cottrell donated to Paul Quinn College, and then Paul Quinn College entered into a contract when I was on the council. I founded the Community Development Corporation. Okay. And the money, the rent from that little shopping strip that had a cleaners in it, it had a barbecue place, it had a barber shop, and a convenience store, black owned convenience store. In fact, it was owned by a former Bishop College student who started out with an ice cream truck in the community wow. and invested his money into a grocery store. So the contract between Paul Quinn College and HUD and the city of Dallas was that HUD would give the money to Dornier build a new little shopping strip for the community and the, the, the profit from it would go back into the community and what we were trying to right. do was get a security fence for the people whose houses back up to Simpson Sim Stewart Road, a six-foot security fence so people would quit working into their backyards. So why wasn't, well, the councilman, why wasn't the Councilman Atkins supporting what the community was trying to do? Didn't they elect him in that seat? Well, they did. But what he was trying to do was get a grocery store in a different location with one of his friends. And then Paul Quinn College, we wanted, we wanted the grocery store uh, where Ingram's property is on the corner. Yeah, right. And Mr. Atkins wanted it at the old Easy Grocery Shop. And then Sorrell's, his whole PR thing is his community garden. Now, you talk about all those other black elected officials, the DA, that were not doing anything. We also need to look at this young man because he's being put out there as a savior, as someone who, who? is concerned about the community, by, by the mayor at this forum. You, sh you should have been there at this forum on race relations, okay? Now, here is someone, when they ask him, do you really sell these, uh, give these or sell these uh, uh, vegetables uh, to the community? You know what his response to H-E-B was? What's that? Uh, they don't have, he said, my food is organic. They can't afford to buy my food, and he's exactly right. His he he sells greens three dollars a bunch. Okay, well we get them anywhere from fifty to a dollar a bunch. Okay, in the community, he puts a fence around the community. You need to talk to Peter Johnson and tell Peter Johnson well, we, how this gentleman is. We initially mm -hmm. started over there. Peter and I, as a matter of fact, initially uh, went and spoke with him about that, and, and and not just that, but we were going to. We had a contractor that was going to come in and redo right. the streets and the pavements over there, That's and we right. never heard anything else back from him. After we, it wasn't going to cost the school anything. He never got back in touch with us, so we knew then right, that we, he was being dictated. He was being a puppet by somebody else, but not other than just the mayor. But there are other elected officials that are behind that. I can assure you, Senator. But what I want to ask you this, and I know I want to ask you this quickly: What do you think about the as a former city councilwoman? What do you think about the fact that when we have elected officials in and we go to them about issues uh, in our community, they they refuse to respond. Uh, they elected a, me a mayor who has, and they supported him. And because they supported him, a lot of people come back to me and say they owe him. And so the things that he's doing, they don't have a voice with because they need to pay him back. They don't owe him. He owes us. It was the black community that took him over the... Why was that? 
Why why was that? Why were you who led you to believe that this was the guy for you? The African American leaders. Okay. Led by John Wally Price said that this gentleman was the right thing. But Jesse Jackson said it best. He said that change is not gonna come from those who benefit from the civil rights. See, you know, we fought, you and I have fought, and we didn't fight to get the white man's foot off our neck to let a black person put his there. And guess what? White people not going to let a black person put a foot on their neck either. Now, we can be all his honors and the mayors and the DAs and whatever, but they're not going to let these black people mess over them, and we shouldn't let them mess over us either. I agree. Now, just like, you know, Barnett said that, um, oh, well, if we go to the home rule, they're going to control uh, uh, the, 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 the blacks on the on the school board, they control them already anyway. And they won't. They won't they be. control a, yeah. them already anyway. <laughs> so and, how do we fix? You know, how do we fix that? When we finance, get... because they finance the campaign. Now let me tell you something. I just got off of a campaign, as you as you well know. Yeah, I did. How and did I that... told the morning news. I said the problem is, is that black people vote and put faith in that mark. They put faith in that mark that these black people are going to change things. Helen Giddings brags in our face. I have the highest voting district in America, black district in America, Democratic district in America. I have sit on the three most powerful committees in the state of Texas. I've been to South Africa 19 times, she tells us. And I say, Helen, but have you stopped and visited the Ingrams who are trying to build a grocery store over there? Can you name me one black business person in your district in Southeast Oak Cliff that got any benefit from you going to South Africa 19 times to help the business people over there? What was the response? Can you tell me. You know what, you know what she says? What did you, you say? Know what she says? She says, you're just mad at me because my priorities are not your priorities. And I said, you know what? You're exactly right. You're supposed to represent us. And what has happened is, and the reason why I ran for office, is to help educate the constituency. You get something for your vote. You, you define what it is that you want to see, and if it, you don't get a change, then you don't keep voting for those same people over and over and Historically, over and over Senator, that's, that's the history says. That's what we've been doing. We vote for people simply because of their names. I was with a group yesterday, and I, I named this particular elected official, and I said, I'll pay you $100 if you can tell me uh, what One this thing. person has done. One, One thing, thing that this person has done since they've been in that office, and they couldn't name one thing, but they knew the person they was, and, and they voted simply because of the name. Now, and, and, and I've got some more calls online, but I want to ask you one more but, question. Well, this, the person you this. lost, to, the person that you lost to uh, in your election, what have they accomplished since they've been in that position they were in? Well, you know, they, they hadn't been there long enough to accomplish anything. It is what she did do to us. She drew. Uh, uh, a, a precinct chair, a neighborhood, out to Mesa, out of the district, because she works for Dallas Can, and they bust those kids out of their neighborhood. That's what the big thing against Tony Rose was. In addition to that, she's a bully for her father. She came into Sabrina's beauty supply and bullied her because Sabrina was fighting for her business, fighting to keep her business open, and her dad, Charles Rose, was trying to have her put out of business, okay, and wow. demolish her business. And then she comes in because we filed a complaint with the attorney general's office. Here comes Tony Rose in that office bullying her. And then she claims to be a mental health professional. And as you know, I'm a mental health advocate. And we don't have anybody from Dallas advocating for us. So I supported her when she said that she was going to advocate. She can't even tell us what does she mean. Is she a psychiatrist? Is she a psychologist? Is she a PNA? What is her experience and training in mental well, health? We'll have to get invite her over to the show and let her. I can, I can finish. I just said one thing. I asked the constituents. I said, why do you keep voting for these people? And J.N. Urban is an F. Every school in District 110 is below performing level. Why is it you don't have any businesses over here? Why do we still continue to have to put with these stray dogs? And she says, and they say, we didn't know. And that's what I told the morning news. I said, you don't report the shortcomings. 
You don't educate the people. So you know what? That's all right. I don't expect you to because I know who pays y'all's bills here. That's our responsibility, Reverend Wright. Well, that's, that's true. We don't have a that's black... That's our responsibility. We don't educate our people as to what... Well, do we have black newspapers? Do we have... No, bl- we, we, <coughs> but, but again, they're controlled like the money millions is. They have to get ads. They have to slant things to the people who paid their business. So you're saying and we I don't mean, have any way of getting our... Other than KNON and, and the community K-N-O-N, before, K-N-O-N, we don't have no other way of getting our, to, our information out to the community. And we've got to put out flyers telling people to tune in to this radio station. It's it was, only free. And, when we had KKDA, Willis Johnson was paid not to let certain people on the air. My and, Lord. and to say good things about people and not to say the bad things. But yeah. I told the morning news, I said, you know, I'm not going to get involved in this redistricting thing. I'm not going to get involved in this eligibility thing. I'm going to move forward, educating the people with every little dime I have to educate the people. I want to ask them, why is it that your children cannot read and write in the fourth grade that they in Irvin? That's a good... out to me to elementary school. That's an awesome Bush fight that you F- fought. That's an awesome <laughs> fight. And keep fighting it, Sandra. I got, an, I got some callers on the line. I need to get to them. We're going to get I on a break. Much, thank, thank you for what, all you do. All right, thank, thank you. you. And we'll be right back. Care. Hold on the phone, everyone. We'll be right with you. All righty, we're back. I'm Reverend Wright, the Community Forum, sitting in for the, my pastor, Dr. Marion Barnett, who's... who's uh, Who's going to be off today? He's feeling a little ill, so we're going to keep him in, in, in prayer. Uh, our conversation topic this morning has been about the charter school attack on democracy and the taxation without representation as well as the dictatorship that is being uh, uh, enforced or trying to be enforced by the mayor of this city, uh, a city that's in pretty much bad shape, but he wants to take over the school district with his home rule district situation. And so our number is 972-647-1893. Give us a call and... Uh, and, 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 and chime in and on if you want to. Uh, several other topics we were discussing, but that was one of them. Uh, we're trying to, you know, they're trying to take the public out of the school district and trying to silence you. They want your tax money, but they don't want you to have a voice. Let's go to line three and get Everett. Everett, are you still there? Yes, sir. I'm still here, Red White. How are you doing? All right. Thank you for holding on. Thank you for holding on. Thank you. Uh, it is a great day to be here, and I am very honored to uh, speak a little bit on this subject. Uh, if I can, I want to thank your last two callers. I believe it was uh, Stephanie and Kevin, uh-huh. who are very, uh, uh, very grounded in uh, what they do and believe. Uh, what I'd like to share with you uh, this morning is I don't want to focus too much on problems. I, I really want to uh, uh, be a part of the solution. Okay. I like I like to fix things that are broken or out of alignment. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed uh, in my years of living here in the state of Texas, which is a great state, um, is that it, it appears to me once we lost our leadership in the African-American uh, community, and that would go back to Dr. King, uh, Malcolm X, and uh, Medgar Evers, it seems like we have really lost our way. Uh, there has been a, a huge disparity and division amongst uh, our leaders today. Why do you think that is? Well, because of uh, different uh, philosophies and approaches to how to uh, combat uh, some of our day-to-day major concerns, such as inequality, racism, and uh, fair pay. Uh, there's a huge difference in ideology as far as uh, approaching that. Even if it's from uh, the Far East, uh, such as New York, Chicago, down south to uh, Mississippi, Memphis, or even Texas, uh, as well as California, there's a there's a big difference in approach to our day-to-day struggles. And, and, and um, uh, now, now let me ask you a question. Do you think racism still exists? Oh, ab- racism, as long as you have different races, racism will always exist. And I don't have a problem with it as, as long as I have the tools to combat it. Well, and and, and and one of the and you and we do, and one of those tools is being a voice, and and, and not just talking about it, but being about it. Uh, I'm glad. You, I'm so <laughs> glad you you say that because again, I'm about a solution. 
And the only other community uh, leader that I can think of that would be able to communicate to a large body of people or, you know, today, or our ministers. And Absolutely. Our Absolutely. But for whatever reason, um, you know, they are, when I say they, I'm talking about our community leaders, the pastors, and, and whatnot. They are more concerned, in a sense, you know, on being politically correct. And I can understand that, you know. We'll say real quick that we don't want to bring religion and politics together. But a pastor has a huge effect on listeners in his church. He is chosen by God to lead, just as well as a military person is chose to lead his platoon or his division in and out of harm. So let me ask you a question. Do you think pastors should be do you think pastors should be involved in, in politics? Absolutely. They were involved in slavery or as freeing the slaves and providing safe havens for them. They were they were involved during the time that Peter was, you know, paying his price in prison. They should be involved. But now they do not want to be involved. Well, and, 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 and some of my brothers in the clergy don't because uh, they're afraid, like I said, they'll lose members, they'll lose tithes and offerings. And it's not about that, although God said we need that to do some of the things we need to do. But this is about standing up and defending those that Jesus considered to be the least of these. And those are his children. And so I we totally should agree. be. We, we got a call I, from Timelina a few minutes ago, and she says to use the churches to get out of the word about our radio shows and being active in political discussions. I, 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 will, I, will, I will agree with that Same as thing. well. But you know, uh, Reverend Wright, you know what it is. We have lost and we have become afraid to fight. We won't fight. The price has already been paid. You know, from our grandparents, our great grandparents, and those before us. What do you think it came from, Every? Why do you think we went from a strong fighting people to a people now who won't fight? Let me, and the reason why I said, let me give you an update right quick. Uh, in Jasper, Texas, there's still been a ma another murder of a young That's man a who, a, a, a young man who had a white wife, and he came up missing, and the sheriff's department that went to look for him said so they didn't find him. The, the family hired an investigator, his name is Alfred Wright as well, went out, they found the young man murdered. The sheriff department said he OD'd, but when they found the body, his throat was cut, his ears was cut off, his eyes was plucked out of his head. 28-year-old physical therapist, and we later found out that, uh, uh, that during the course of this investigation that the sheriff's daughter was a friend of the young man. And so we still fighting racial. At the end of the day, in the 21st century, why is it that we still continue to go to these horrible situations that we go through and the point is is that we used to be a fighting people but because for some particular reason we've had those who and like I said earlier it's the difference between leading blacks and black leaders those leaders that were picked by other people told us to, to, to stand down and that's the mentality that we have is a stand down mentality so we don't believe it there are still a few of us that are still fighting on a daily basis our organization fight for the rights of people. This month, there's going to be a young African-American military girl who's going to be in court in Rockwall, Texas, and I'm going to put them out there, uh, being accused of stealing a cell phone that she found on the ground, and she returned to her owner, and they're still charging her with theft of a cell phone. Well, 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 well I'm right. You know, I wish I could speak on that a little bit, but being a private investigator and a retired military person, I would definitely, as an investigator, I would search more for the truth because I have found out, you know, in my line of work, there's always two sides of a story. Well, three. Now, I'm not, I'm not minimizing the 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 unjust uh, charge that does happen, uh, and I'm really um, sorry to hear about the uh, young man down in Jasper that lost his life, which is very, very tragic. But let me touch on tragedy. The only time that I find that we as a people come together is after a tragedy and that just burns me up we feel somehow and i'm talking about our generation 
the generation of the late 60s and the early 70s because we are the ones that are carrying the torch right now. The only time we come together is after a, 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 a ridiculous beating or murder or rape or something. Why do you think that is? Well, that's because the only time it appears that we can get um, activated on a situation is after a tragedy. And that really kind of box us into being a reactive person or a class of people as opposed to a proactive type. Let, um, let me ask you a question. That generation that you just named was a generation that became an genocidal attack. And when I say that, that's when, when I mentioned earlier about the drugs that were being brought in the community and the division of the families. We were all raised to be a family. But when, 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 when white people gave black women the jobs and she was getting a corporate job and they asked her what her husband did and he worked for Guff Gas Station, then they said, well, why are you getting him? He's working at a gas station. That was a part of the division of the family. You know, a, a family that, 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 that prays together, stays together, and we were divided. And so we were under a general general attack. And you're right. Our generation is the one that should have carried this to the next level. But we was, crack was put in our community, uh, state jail felonies. All these things were created to shut us down. And eventually it did shut us down. And so those elected officials and people that we have that... That would should have been leaders of the the, the late uh, Al uh, Lipscomb and my dear friend and, and brother Lee Alcorn. Those brothers stood up by themselves as if we're doing today and not being a voice. We wanted to take a proactive approach, but unfortunately, you're right. We don't we don't we don't make a statement until after something tragic has happened to us, and that's shame on us. But, and, and Pastor, I, again, I will agree with you. But you know what? I do not hold the elected officials accountable. Well, Just you're like this. You're right. Let, 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 me, let me say this because, you know, sometimes if you really want to get us worked up as a people or divided as a people, all you have to do is start talking about slavery and then how we actually got over here. And it was, you know, partly, not all, partly due to our own kings having a battle and one selling us off. Well, that, that term, that term, jigaboos has always been has always been a de definition. I, I, I'm glad I'm glad to hear you say that word, jigaboos, because I can relate to it. Yeah. You know, so, you know what? I'm right on that note. Now, even in our communities today, we still have we them. Call them. We don't call them jigaboos, but they are sellouts. Yes, sir. We do have Same. a bunch of sellouts in our community. Tomato, tomato, the same thing. <laughs> Listen. You know, I want to be politically correct, because if you say jigaboo, not too many people can relate to it, but you and I can, and some of the other listeners, but now we have to say sellout. Well, you're oh, exactly right. Gosh. Thank you for your I call, Avery. Ter terminology yeah. straight. There you go. I thank you for your call. I got some more calls in, but appreciate you and continue to keep doing what you're doing, brother, and that's uh, having that positive attitude, so we continue to do things positively. All right, let's go to line two, Mr. G. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good morning, Reverend Mike. Good morning. How you doing? Uh, I just want to put a little spin on what's, what's going on. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm a 60-year-old black man, and I started coming, and part of our demise was that the power that was in front of us uh, didn't want to uh, educate us, embrace us, okay. or, uh, as, as you would say, groom us uh, to take their places for a change. I mean, Judge Walter Price and them, they've been in power for a long time. They said, you got to have somebody. So it might not be kin folks, but you got to have somebody that's aggressive or, or that they want to take the torch and move it to the next level. Well, what, let me ask you a question. Now, what about if the torch is not handed to you? Because I'm, and, and when you said that, and, and a lot of people say John Wiley Price, but John Wiley Price is just one person, and... and, and uh, uh, that should have been a lot of John Wiley prices and not just one John Wiley price. But, but, let me, but let me ask you something. When you say that our problem right now is that those that those elected officials that do look like us don't want to pass the baton. And, and so by the grace of God, when it came to the civil rights and community activists, we took the baton. 
and we were able to open the doors for the Lee Alcorns and the Al Lipscombs, the great men who were inspirational to me, Reverend Marion Barnett, and we were allowed to open doors that they could walk through. But what about our elected officials that don't want to pass the baton, they want to die in that position and don't know, and, it's, and the same thing that they're doing now is the same thing that's happening in our churches. We don't want to reach out and grab our young kids and bring them into church. We don't reach out and groom anybody to take our place, and so when we die, the whole, the, the, the office is going to die and the church is going to die. Well, this is, this, this is the result uh, uh, before you uh, is, 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 is what's happening because, you know, uh, uh, you know, it, you know, we can start with, okay, you know, we were talking about, you were saying about history. You know, I'm, I'm one of the leaders in the community that's trying to preserve Juneteenth. Uh, you know, it's, it's people embarrassed uh, from the state of Texas because of our history. You know, uh, you pass, it, it, sometimes you have to identify what the problem is in order to have a resolution. Let me ask you a quick something. question about that. Since you mentioned that, let me ask you a question about that. And, and, and I've got to ask God to work on my head about that. Why would you celebrate? And, and, and this is something that's been going on for generations, but it's a different celebration now. Why would you celebrate and have parades over finding out that you were free five years later? Let me tell you something. <laughs> I, 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 not only would I celebrate it, sir, but but but, but I, I would embrace it for this one reason. If it took me that long to understand uh, that I was in, uh, I was the last state of the union to find this information out, and the harvest wasn't picked. You know, we, we we're going to steal you know, twelve years of slavery. We still were freed and then resold, sir. That let me know. That from my history, in order for that not to happen again, I want to know. I don't care how long it takes, and I think that sometimes it's part of the fight, like you were talking about earlier. Why do we have to get together when there's a tragedy? We stayed in a fighting mood for three days, and the media know that, and then after that, that's it. That's what. <laughs> That's you what they like think. The yeah. Yes, sir. That's what so, you, so. you're right about that. But let me ask you this question: Why is it that that uh, why is it that uh, something? Why is it that since because we do find out late that we do nothing else until something else happens? And, and just like you just said, even finding out five days, five years later, whatever that we were freed, uh, celebrating and not doing anything to make sure that never happens again does us no good. Okay, but again, you know, it's just like when you prepare a sermon for in the morning. Okay, it's better to know than not know. Uh, uh, um, you know, I would hate to be free for five years and didn't know I was free. Uh, come, you know, compared to learn five years later. So now, what am I going to do about it? And just like that, 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 that dog, you know, that's being changed. Uh, you know, in a, in an in a area for, for for twenty years, then all of a sudden you let him go, and he can't go. He won't go no further because he's trained to go nothing but just that limitation. Because he's gonna be fed, he's gonna be housed. And this is a he's familiar. I think we see. No, I think we see the same thing. We see the same thing now that we realize that we are. What are we going to do to make sure that that doesn't happen ever again? Once you're exposed to the knowledge of your past, then you can understand what it takes to prepare a future and have education where that thing won't happen again. See, you know, this is something I don't want to forget. I don't want to forget. But we need to tell it. Again. You, well, you're right, Mr. G, but we need, and that's what I said earlier. we got to tell our history because if we don't know where we come from, how can we know where we're going? Exactly, sir. And, and I think the main thing, people like yourself, who are leaders, uh, as, as you know, in the church as well as publicly uh, in, in, in the community, sir, I think that also to, to get the black man older like me to trust you, to be your foundation and rock, then we can curb the young ones. There you go. But sir, you know, if we can't get together, if, 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 if men of, of, of equality can't get get together, but because of trust, 
You know, I'm, I'm gonna give you some less work on your plate. I had a deacon tell me, sir, sixty. You know, he's he's, he's about eighty. You know, and I say, you know, how come we can't get together and just come up with ideas on, on how to uh, uh, save money, to put our money back in the community, or uh, uh, you know, do, you know, do, do, do things like um, people do as far as using the, uh, um, you know, the, the, the you know the system. Well, so it's because of trust. And I said, now you need to me here. It's 2014, and we still don't trust one another. Sir. Well, we still got that house and field mentality. By the devil. The devil's good at what he does. And that's the divide. Just like the Romans was to divide and conquer. As long as we are divided, if see, if we don't ride, as long as we divide, we're not going to ever be able to do anything. And so that's the mentality trust. Why is it that you don't trust me? We both going through the same thing and we both struggled and been through all the things that we've been through, but yet you don't trust me. And that's a, that's a sad that you, you, you made a valid point. Why is it that we can't get together, but there's always been the house and field mentality and we still have have it. Thank you for your call, Mr. G. We got some more on the line. Thank you. God bless you. Keep doing what you're doing. Let's go to line four and speak to Sister Evangelist Ada McKenzie. Good morning. Good morning. Of God. Good morning, Reverend woman of God. You doing all right? I am yes, absolutely I, wonderful. Thank you. I was calling in on the subject about the young people and the way they dress. Um, you know, today in families, we're losing a lot of love and unity. Let me ask you something, Pastor, why you said that. What is the, what is the uh, definition of family in today's society? Support, love, unity, power. And, and what happened is, it, oh, is and by it, the way, it, I'm the CEO of Divine Purpose and Connection in the Body of Christ Worldwide okay. Ministry. Okay. But, but, we, but when you say family, is that mother, father, sisters, mother, father, yes. children? Okay. Yes. And also, as a even on the outside, as a community, mm -hmm. um, love and unity. Okay. Because when I think about my childhood growing up and our childhood, our parents was loving, kindly, godly, and showed us tough love. And today, the unity, you know, when we was coming up, we showed tough time, came, we, we hung together. Well, let me tell you, Pastor, I mean, a lot of people get mad at me, and a lot of women that I love them to death, but they get mad at me when I say that. But that's a part of the genocidal attack on the black family. It was divide and conquer. The, uh, Mr. G just said a few minutes ago uh, that we were divided purposely in order for us not to be that family because uh, there were, like you said, mother and father and kids, and you were taught if you got some young lady pregnant, that's going to be your wife, or you shouldn't have got her pregnant. That was just your responsibility. But when we divided the house and, and the attack became on the black men and they were being sent to prison, the black women were given the jobs, they got that mentality, well, y'all, they took the neighbor out of hood. And you can't get mad at nobody but us because that's they bit us down and don't worry about them. That's not where we were brought up. We in a neighborhood, we took care of each other. We were a whole neighborhood of family. You know, if you didn't belong in the neighborhood, we won't know what you're doing walking down the street looking all crazy and funny for. But when women took over these places and, 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 and then it became that's her business. You know how you women are. Sometimes a lot of them don't get along with each other and, and, and that's where the neighbor left the hood and the young boys started hollering. It, it became a Hood. Instead of a neighborhood, when we broke, came up, it was called a neighborhood. And, and a, a lot of people get mad at these young boys because they sag them. But at the end of the day, unfortunately, there ain't no daddy in the house, and only somebody buying them clothes is mama. So we got a, a large array of women who are struggling with math because they can't get the sizes right. That's right. And, not, and rather, right, not just one race. All races. And yeah, that may be true. Unity is just being missed out of all races. And the enemy is trying to drive out the love and the unity out of the family home today. He has and done without it. love and unity, it is hard for a family to survive. Absolutely. God is love. God is power. And, 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 and the, this time, we have to realize we all are God's children, and we should love each other. Well, Pastor, you know, Evangelist, let me say this. Let me say this. we got to have them as, 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 as men and women of God, and I'm talking about my brothers and sisters in the clergy, God's property, don't, God's property don't stop at the offering table. Amen. We need to go out in the community and reach out. And, you know, I brought up earlier in the conversation of these young boys who raped this little 13-year-old blind girl, a deaf girl, 
who raped her. What were these young boys thinking to disrespect a young 13-year-old girl who's at the park, playing at a park? That's what parks are built for, for children to go and have fun and play. And she was taken off and, 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 and raped by these young boys. At the end of the day, who should be held accountable for what took place in that young girl's life? Should it be those boys or those boys' parents? I can't say parents because I guarantee it wasn't going to be a father and mother in that house. Right, right. So if we were, and even in the churches today, we are missing a lot of love and unity, even in the Christ way, because we are, are allowing a lot of the worldly things to come into the church. So they're learning worldly things at home. They're learning worldly things in church. There is no true doctrine being taught today because we are trying to hold up the ratio and the revenue. And so the it's about business and performance instead of praise. Come on, come on. Instead of now, praise, uh, we don't went from yeah. praise to performance. Come and on, so come people on. come to church to get entertained and not to get the word. Well, you know, at the end of the day, uh, as you know, the Word of God said, many are called, but few shall be chosen. And that's what's going to apply to a lot of us today. Because if God called you to do what you do, then you would reach out and grab his people. Somebody said earlier, this is about service, not serve us. We we yes. go from we don't went from a service to first serve us. It's not about that. You can't come. You know we 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 see on TV where they're talking about this alternative lifestyle. That's a decision that you should make. You shouldn't have to advertise that, and that's not my business. That's your business. But that's a, that's a sickness that it has. There's some that needs to be addressed, and a lot of our brothers in the clergy won't do it because, like I said, they're afraid they'll lose their piano player or their choir director. Or, or but at the end of the day, just like I preach about lying and stealing and murdering, I preach about the alternative lifestyle as well there's that all of those things are abomination to god and i can't compromise it doesn't matter if i'm scared i'm going to lose my tithe and offering and so amen. a and lot of it goes back to the church amen and one thing about it and at the end of the day if okay. you do not have the truth the true doctrine the true word of god the true living grain then whether you're on land or water, uh, you're going to sink because you don't have a foundation. That's absolutely that is absolutely true. Sister Evangelist, the kids, I, I've got to go. We, we, we're running out of time. Uh, I want to thank you all for calling in today and, and having a great time. I want to lift up uh, our Pastor Reverend Barnett. Break. Oh, we got a break. Okay. okay. We're going to go to a break. This, uh, and we'll be right back. Hold on one second. All righty, we're back, we're back. I'm Reverend Ronald Wright, Executive Director of Justice Seekers, Texas, uh, pastor of God's Community Church of Joy. You can give me a, give us a call this morning at 972-647-1893. That's 972-647-1893. I'm sitting in for Pastor uh, Marion Barnett, whose church is low, Heavenly Joy is loaded on, located on the corner of Bruton and Masters in Dallas. And if you want to uh, visit our church, give me a call at 214-779-3549. Uh, let's go back to the and that phone number again. is 214-779-3549. That's God's Community Church of Joy. Uh, let's go to line one and get James from Palestine. James, how are you doing this morning? Good morning, Reverend Ryan. I really appreciate everything everybody said, and thank you so much for your sacrifices. And Reverend Barnett, good morning to you, too. Uh, you said a mark for about the offering plate, about service, performance to families, and uh, on this uh, charter school, there's a, uh, a good friend of ours down here named Mike Anderson that is over charter school throughout uh, East Texas, Central Texas. He might be up some help for you to interview him, and also Kevin Willis, the professional basketball player, is over charter schools so from down in Phoenix. Somewhere in that area, he may be of some help if we can contact them and talk about charter schools. Well, I'm not saying all charter schools are bad, but to turn a district, uh, a oh, public no, no, school no. district, I, you know, I'm just saying to turn a public school district into a charter school, I think is a little ridiculous, especially with the hidden agenda as to its undercover yes. oh, dictatorship. Yes. I'm familiar with you. They're taking away our liberty and our rights. Absolutely. I'm just saying these guys here might help, and then it may be uh, adversary or something, but you might could get something out of them, but I'm I'm not for and. Uh, Taking away our rights in any kind of way. Well, you know, uh, if, they, if if you can, just have them look up Justice Seekers Texas on their web like website and give me a call because we're going to put together a press conference coming up this week, and to get yep. the tr- the real true story out as to what's trying to take place instead of uh, you know like they 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 had people on the door, I mean on the train station uh, telling people that uh, uh, to sign that petition that is going to help 
the public school, which was not true. It's to, to help to get to the 25 percent that is going to be needed to put together this charter school that's that's being done by the mayor of this city. Like I said, in Dallas, it, it, his job should be to create economic development and jobs and, and look into our communities because it takes a village to raise a child. And if the village is tore up, you're not going to ever raise a child. And that falls under the guidance and leadership of the mayor. And so uh, we need to go down to City Hall and get the charter and get all of those things, the duties, and, and all of the mail, the, and all of them like that, and hold their feet to the fire by using the Texas government codes and the Attorney General always, and put pressure on them and break up a bunch of that stuff going on. That's what we're doing down here in Palestine. We also want to become part of the justice figures. And we remember the offer that you had made some time back, so we'll be contacting you about Contact, that. Contact, we'd love to have you to be on board, and, and that's what it takes is unity, you know, it's power in numbers. And, yeah, we're yes, going sir. to attack this issue, this, this this situation and make sure it, it does what it needs to do. And I thank yes, God sir. for you, Dan and Jane, the fight that y'all are doing in Palestine and continue yes, to fight. And if you need us, don't hesitate to give us a call. Thank, thank you, you, and you God so bless you. Thank you. Okay, let's go to line two and talk to Brother Maurice. Are you there, Maurice? Yes, sir, I am. How you doing, Reverend Wright? I'm doing good, sir. How you doing? Hey, hey sir, I'm doing great, sir. Continue to love love, and, uh, love and hearing you and, as well as Mr. Bar Reverend Dr. Barnett on the show as well. Um, I just want to, um, um, everything that's been said today on the show has been great. Um, speaking for my generation, I'm 32 years old. Um, that's not old. And I, that is correct, sir, <laughs> at all. Not it's 32. At all. You don't add the old until you get in the 40s and 50s. <laughs> hey, amen. Amen. Um, and, and I was in this worldly, I would call it the worldly world of things, sir, but until two and a half years ago, coming back into Christ and just getting back into the traditions that, are, that were originally taught to me okay, and going forward with that, I've been able to change my own life. And I, so I know that there is a God and the way in which the laws have been set is, is correct. And if we as people would go back to the traditional way of doing things, it worked for over 2,000 years for all those before us. That's right. That, that is right. So, and then to, for someone your age to, to acknowledge that as a blessing, and that's because actually the ball should be in your hand now. At, at, at our age, we should be handing the ball, the, the baton, to you, so you can so you can uh, teach the next generation. Because apparently, there the genera our generation can't take can't teach the generation after you. So you guys have to be the one to do it. But we've got to reach out and grab you, and so and let you know, hey, I'm giving you the baton. Now it's up to you. But. Unfortunately, we, we, we live in a generation, our, our generation was a little greedy, although we were under attack, that we chose to hold on to the baton until we die off and don't know when we die, everything that, that, uh, that, that we work for and everything that's around us die off as well. And that, that not only applies to political, but it also apply, applies to the church as well. So I not just want to say to all the listeners, those that are out there doing what they're doing, continue doing that, sir, continue doing that. But you have to continue. To, to reach back and mold the young people. I do have a mentor. I, I thank God for the gentleman, uh, Mr. Pastor Quincy Kamau at Christian Chapel Temple of Faith. All right. I, I love my pastor. He, All right. he's, a, and he's an inspiration, and he is, is empowering me to become exactly what you're speaking of today on this show, sir. I'm only 32 years old. I got a, a full life ahead, and I look forward to it, but I just want to let you all know, go back to our roots, to the way of which it has worked, Continue to reach out to our young people. Pull up our young people. So I understand everything else is coming into the forefront as far as buildings and making changes in the district. Yes, we, we need that also. Well, I thank but God you for you. But, but you can't go forward until you have the people to, 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 to carry the torch. I thank, so. I thank God for you, and God bless you, Pastor. Tell me to keep doing the work. We're kind of running out of time. I want to go ahead and bring Greg Bob on with the, with the job lines. Brother Greg, how you doing? Good morning, good morning, doing fine. Doing good, fine. good, good. Well, we got any jobs out there? There are some jobs out here this morning on our SAP job line. That's Solutions and Actions Today job line. Right. Brought to you every Saturday morning during church information in an open forum here on Kano in 89.3, the voice for the people. Metro Uniforms is looking for customer service representatives. The number for inquiry is 972-556-9723. Once again, that's Metro Uniforms with customer service representatives. The number for inquiry is 972-556-9723. Already Wire and Cable Incorporated is looking for a warehouse worker. They're asking you to apply online at www.app. 
com. Once again, it's priority wire and cable is looking for a warehouse worker. They're asking you to find one at www.atpone.com. Johnson Controls is looking for customer service representatives. They're asking you to find one at www.johnsoncontrols.com. Once again, that web address is www.johnsoncontrols.com. Mac Bray Intelligent Laundry Systems is looking for warehouse tech. They're asking you to mail your resume to MacGray04 at yahoo.com. Once again, that, that email address to send your resume is Mac, M-A-C, Gray, G-R-A-Y, the, the number 04 at yahoo.com. CCC Parts is looking for warehouse oh, associates. They're asking you to find line at www.truckpro.com backslash careers with Ness. Once again, that web address is www.truckpro dot com backslash careers with mess. If you are a child loving patient and energetic individual and would like to work in a daycare setting, the number inquiry is nine seven two two nine zero four nine nine five. Once again, if you are a child loving patient and energetic individual and would like to work in a daycare setting, the number inquiry is nine seven two two nine zero four nine nine five. If you are a person affected by addiction and needs assistance with your recovery efforts or an and they're trying to make the transition back to mainstream spot and need assistance with job search. Number in inquiry is 214-634-2722. Once again, that number, if you are a person affected by addiction and need assistance with your recovery, if or an ex offender trying to make their transition back in the mainstream society and need assistance with job search, number in inquiry is 214-634-2722. Today is a good day. They're looking for a job to find one. Let me repeat that. Today is a great day. They're looking for a job to find one. One of our callers will always call us in. He always had a good word. Most of the time he comes on the line and says, Envy not your oppressors, nor take on their ways. We got converted in the civil rights in the civil rights struggle. We were striving for equal access. What we got was integration. All Something right. to think on. And with right. that we bring our uh, we bring our SAT job line to a close. All right, thank you, Brother Greg Barber, for the great work that you do. Got one more call coming in, uh, uh, caller number three, concerned sister. Got about 20 seconds. Show me some love right quick. What are you talking about? All right, Mayor Rollins needs to be mayor and be functioning in his department and every auxiliaries and functions in, there, in the government and keep the public schools open that are doing what they're supposed to do because the love of money is the root of all evil. There you go. You don't put a whole lot of money in the charter schools and then close down the schools that the taxpayer and citizens uh, have paid for down through the years. And I just don't believe everybody is not functioning in the public schools. And oh. divided we stand, together we stand, divided we fall, God got it in control, and let's keep praying. There you go. Thank you very much for our concerned citizens. I want to thank all of my calls for calling in today. Uh, uh, I uh, want to thank uh, the brother Gabe Barber for the for the jobs. Uh, we got to continue to be a voice. We're going to lift up uh, our pastor today. Uh, pastor Barnett was a little ill this morning, so he had to leave. And so we'll lift him up in prayer and speak healing to him right now. Uh, we thank all of you for calling. If you're looking for a church home, Heavenly Joy is located on the corner of Masses in Bruton. And you can go by and see Reverend uh, Barnett, or you can give me a call at 214-779-35. 49. I am the executive director of Justice Seekers Texas, the 21st Century Civil Rights and Social Justice Organization. Uh, uh, we're located on, on at 400 South Bang in, Zang in Beckley. You can look us up on the website. And I am the senior pastor of God Community Church in Joy. Of Joy. I want to thank Anna, our producer, for doing a great job. Uh, God bless you. Have a wonderful day, Sister Rhonda Carbons. Good morning. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227 or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you.